you're likely to be somewhere between curious and critical about what I'm about to say on this rather divisive issue. And you know the subject is going to come up because this passage contains words like chosen and predestined. For some people, this sets up a doctrinal discussion that finds some amount of tension between the idea that God has given us a free will to exercise with respect to our willingness to believe the gospel of Christ and the opposing notion that such free will would violate God's sovereignty and that, in fact, he has predestined some of us to receive salvation and other folks are just out of luck. So let me tell you where I stand on this and where I believe you should as well. If we are in Christ, God wants us to be holy. He wants us to be favored. He wants us to be forgiven and redeemed and wise and sealed by his spirit until he fulfills all of his purposes in us. This is God's will and God's express purpose that existed in his mind before the creation of the world. And those things apply to all those he knew would believe. Now, why do I use that expression? Why do I say that? In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1, basically points to the idea that God has made his purposes towards us a matter of his will and his desire for us based on what he knew long before we were even here or we even made a choice about him. Amen? Secondly, in Romans chapter 8, Beginning in verse 28, it said, We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. As I read these passages, it seems clear to me that God has special plans for those he knew would respond to his gospel. Now, some Calvinists actually teach that God has deliberately chosen some people to be uh, hopelessly unable to respond to the gospel and be saved. And they seemingly take some amount of intellectual pride in this position. But I have trouble with that because the word of God in a very plain way contradicts that idea. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, the first four verses, it says, First of all, then, I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone. And he goes on to say why? For kings and all those who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good, and it pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So I have a Bible that says that God is not willing that any should perish. He wants all men to be saved and all to come to the knowledge of the truth. In different places, the Bible says, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. What I want for them is for them to be saved. I have not designated and set apart and made anybody. I never created anybody in my image that I want to send to hell. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, The Lord does not delay his promise, as some understand delay, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Settles it for me. 